Well, here we are standing at sea level on the road down to the Dead Sea. This is the highway from Jerusalem which leads down to the Dead Sea. We're going to carry on another 400 metres down below sea level. At nearly 400 metres below sea level, it is the lowest lake on earth. The water has a salt content many times more than ocean water, giving it a much higher relative density. This means that objects float much higher than normal, as Jim, Tor and Mark demonstrate here. This is the Dead Sea, also known in the Bible as the Salt Sea. As you can see at the edge of the lake here, just masses of salt. Because the salt content of the water is so high, as the water evaporates, it leaves behind these enormous salt deposits and huge salt crystals. That's just pure salt coming out of the water. The lake was once a lush and fertile valley. Large cities flourished nearby. Ron's research led him to locate the ashen remains of Sodom near the southern end of the lake, and nearby the ashen remains of Zoar, still visible after nearly 4,000 years. The distinct square outline of the city is still visible, as this colour enhanced photograph clearly shows. The square shape is what one would expect to find, since ancient cities were often built within a square boundary of defensive walls. Erosion from wind and rain means that virtually nothing recognisable remains, but these mounds are obviously anomalies, structures destroyed long ago. The best preserved remains found by Ron are below Masada. Masada is the hilltop fortress overlooking the Dead Sea, 434 metres above the lake level. Directly below Masada are two well-preserved areas believed to have been parts of Gomorrah. When viewed from Masada, it's obvious that time and weather have eroded these remains as well. But the remains stand out quite stark from the surrounding desert. Many others are now beginning to realise just what these formations represent. But i got no doubt it was a city. Yeah. And it looks very much like city walls, doesn't it? But... Within these areas are many unusual shapes. These certainly defy attempts to explain their origin by natural causes. When examined closely, their uniqueness becomes even more apparent. Remarkable shapes can still be seen in the ash. Such as this sphinx shape. Here we are standing in the ashen remains of what we believe is Gomorrah and there's this odd singular shape standing up by itself. There's nothing anywhere around it. It seems to be on a bit of a rise. We believe this could have been a sphinx perhaps guarding one of the corners of the city. Entering the remains, one is immediately impressed by the magnitude of them. These were big cities. Prior to the destruction recorded in the Bible, a large population had flourished here for some time before the sudden destruction came. Recent findings reveal just how large that population was. The ancient Canaanites buried their dead, and archaeologists across the valley from this site have found huge Canaanite burial grounds. Conservative estimates put the number of these graves at well over one million. It's fallen down from up high. That's quite hard. The remains consist largely of calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate is a byproduct when limestone is burnt with sulfur. This is exactly what one would expect to find.
This shows up in the ruins as alternating layers of pure calcium sulfate and calcium carbonate with silicates, remains of limestone and other materials used in the construction of these cities. Very much like ash. Whereas the white layers remained fairly hard. Bizarre, it feels like well, icing sugar or something. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get that from river flows. No. It's just incredible. <laughs> it's hot here out in the desert at the moment, even though the sun's barely up. Within these areas you find geometric shapes, which are obviously not natural. For example, this shape here, this building shape. Here in the ashen remains of Gomorrah, we find exactly what we'd expect to find if this was indeed an ancient city. We find geometric shapes, such as this tower here, or this ziggurat shape in the background. One of the best evidences, though, is the sulfur balls. And come with us now, we'll show you those right now. Are they all along the same line? Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, yep. A little ball, there's a few there. And they're just sitting in the layers of straight ash. Look at that. That is pure sulphur. The brimstone has been tested and proves to be extremely pure elemental sulphur combined with small amounts of magnesium. This will be a really nice sample. In fact, it's so pure it burns very, very easily as Aaron demonstrates here. Oh, that's strong. <coughs> the fumes it gives off can be overpowering. Whoa! You have to go back to the Bible and check. Yeah, what would that be? It's in the Bible that it can be an eternal fire, and here is the proof. It's still burning. Yeah. The Bible describes five cities that were destroyed, and to the north of the Dead Sea is another of the sites identified by Ron. This one was the city of Admar. Again, the white ashen ruins stand out distinctly from the surrounding desert. This area smells of sulphur, yet there is no geothermal activity here. As with all sites examined, it is far above the Dead Sea, too high to attribute to sedimentary deposits from the lake. And again, symmetrical formations are apparent. For example, these rectangular shapes, which perhaps were once stone blocks. Is that sulphur you found the big bit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A good bit. And brimstone is present in the ash. And here charcoal can be found in the ash also. See, 
break that open. There's some charcoal. Charcoal stuck inside it. Look at that, that's charred wood. That's definitely charcoal. The evidence found supports the biblical account of how these sites were destroyed. The next step was to have these samples analysed to determine their exact composition. Bombard the surface and all the atoms then absorb some of that radiation and, and release it, like fluoresce it at a certain wavelength. That can be totally crushed. Yeah. That test showed that the ash was a sulfate, a byproduct of a sulfur reaction, which is what we'd expect. The sulfur from the sites under investigation is the consistency of pressed powder. The sulfur from Gomorrah is distinctly different to sulfur found in geothermal regions, such as Rotorua in New Zealand. The analysis revealed that the brimstone was almost pure elemental sulphur, typically about 98%, with a measurable amount of magnesium. The white ash is pure calcium sulphate. What stands out is how clean the samples are, with a conspicuous lack of trace elements. This is consistent with ash from an intensely hot furnace, exactly what one would expect to find from the account in Genesis 19. Is it possible that the Dead Sea sites are the result of geothermal activity? Sulphur is also found in geothermal areas such as here, Rotorua in New Zealand. So how does the sulphur here compare with the sulphur we find at the Dead Sea sites? One can smell the sulphur in the air here. Sulphur from geothermal regions is usually no more than 40% pure and is never found in circumstances like that found at the destroyed cities. Here's a steam vent in the ground and all the yellow colour around it is sulphur crystals forming. Sulphur from under the ground. Even though some of these places are called Sodom and Gomorrah, the sulphur here is nothing like the brimstone we find near the Dead Sea. It's this classic bright yellow colour that indicates the crystal structure is rhombic, very different. The white colour of the sulphur is the result of it being exposed to high temperatures for a period of time, as happened at Gomorrah. The scenario is this. The cities, built of limestone, which is calcium carbonate, had sulphur and fire rain down upon them. The principal byproduct from this reaction was very pure calcium sulphate which is what the ashen remains consist of. This is exactly what one would expect to find based on the account in Genesis 19.